So, surely one of the most impressive aspects of Newton's book on the system of the world is the way in which it gathers data globally. Um, this is where the numbers are. Not just astronomical observations of comets, moons, satellites, planets, but also um, observations of the rates at which pendulum clocks beat, gathered typically by French travellers to the equator, Richet's expedition to Cayenne in Guyana in 1672, um, the observations of tidal heights from around the world, from Cape Horn, from the Gulf of Tonkin, um, cometary data from South America or from China, uh, vast amounts of data from the West Indies, not just of pendulum clocks, but also of cometary observations, transits of comets, and so on. It, in many ways, I think, makes the book three of the Principia uh, kind of compendium, an inventory of precision measurements worldwide. But it, of course, raises a fundamental problem of evidence, since these observations had to be appraised. And one of the tasks that the Newtonian manuscripts show us at Newton executing in the 1680s is very much evidence appraisal. And three principles are at work. First of all, um, Newton, in the first edition of the Principia, clearly takes the view that in order for numerical observations to count as sure evidence of a theoretical prediction, agreement has to be exact. He's not prepared to tolerate much variance in observational data between prediction and observation. So a great deal of work is done already in the middle of the 1680s, and then even more so in the successive projects of the 1690s, the 1700s and the 1710s, as successive versions of the Principia are developed with his collaborators like Richard Bentley, Roger Coates, Henry Pemberton and others, to make the derivations of quantitative estimates from his theory match precisely the observational data which he's gathered from these far-flung sources. In that sense, it seems as if he lacks a theory of tolerable observational error distribution. So he's prepared to manipulate, to put it no more strongly than that, the kind of numerical prediction he gets from a theory, for example, about the moon's place, or the height of tides, or the length of pendulums, and thus the shape of the earth, so that the um, agreement between prediction and observation is far, far beyond the tolerable error estimates of the kinds of observations that were being made to many significant figures. And that's very striking. But secondly, he is also absolutely prepared to engage in complex qualitative judgments of observers' reliability. So if data needs to be thrown out of his data set, it will typically be thrown out on the grounds of observational incompetence or failure of one sort or another. And data that matches his model will be privileged, will be weighted in association with the great credit of competence that he's prepared to give to particular observers. So, for example, the French astronomer Jean Richet, who was sent by the Crown to Cayenne in 1672, is judged an extremely competent and reliable observer, and Richet's estimates for the length of a pendulum that beats seconds are treated with great respect. Um, similarly, data on the heights and tides from observers who give numbers that don't fit the model that Newton has are excluded, typically on the grounds of observational incompetence or failure. So there's an implied economy of observational trustworthiness there, which overlaps with, but is not the same as, judgments of social status. 
It's not a question simply that observers of an elevated social station are therefore more credible. That's not what we see in the Principia. And finally, perhaps most strikingly, um, he's prepared constantly to rework this set of calculations. It's pretty clear from the uh, interpaginated version of the Principia that we have from different drafts of these sections of these propositions and from successive editions and drafts of the successive ed editions that Newton is never satisfied with the kind of agreement that he's getting. Um, this is an ongoing project, uh, not complete by the time of Newton's death. So that I think we can genuinely talk about this as a continuous research project for Newton, um, with uh, the price of truth being eternal vigilance.